sand is on the shore he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all creatures great and small and he knows my name every step that I take every move that I Every tear that I cry, he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine because he knows my name. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions. 
questions of life that I know in whom I have believed. And He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I
thank Emily for the songs. Uh, it's a blessing. Appreciate her coming with, back with me again this week. Uh, appreciate Bruce and Chris being here with me today. Uh, I want to thank Jack, Ivy for doing what he's doing, uh, the messages that are getting out. It's, it's worth it, uh, and, and I thank God for that. Uh, I ask that y'all be in prayer for one another, be in prayer for our country, be in prayer for our leaders, uh, our president, uh, decisions great and small having to be made during this, and people, I, I mean, this is our first time as a country to ever go through something like this, uh, and, and our age. Uh, I know things has happened back in the earlier 1900s and uh, before, but as far as us, this is our first time to deal with something like this, so uh, every decision won't be right, uh, and by the grace of God, uh, the, the wrong decisions will be fixed the next time something like this happens, if it happens, and be prepared for it, but be in prayer for them instead of talking about them. It's sad to folks out there that's got this figured out uh, and would know what to do, but you don't have a clue. It's easy to say it at a, well, it ain't right now because we can't sit at a cafe table and talk over a cup of coffee, but normally we would have it figured out at the, at the, at the coffee table, at the, at the stores or wherever. Everybody's got it figured out, but when it come down to it, you don't have, we, we don't have a clue. But what we need to do is just pray. Quit talking and start praying. We as a country need to just call out the Lord's name, uh, lift one another up. I ask that y'all remember the, the family of Coach Jimmy Mayfield, uh, precious man, and he, he'll he's a he'll be a big loss to this community. But I want to tell you something: the Lord just gained him a gained him a good one right there. And he knew that the day he saved him. And I ask that y'all just remember that family. Remember Sister Lavelle and Chris. That, that bunch, they're, they're tired, but they've got decisions they've got to make and already made. But just be in prayer for them. Be in prayer uh, for everyone that's come in contact with this, this sickness. There's folks around us that has it. And uh, we need to be lifting them up in prayer. Uh, calling them out and, and calling their name out. But folks, we need to be careful. Just just be careful. And once again, this it's the things that we've been told throughout our life. Wash your hands. Watch what you touch. Yeah. Uh, but now I'll be the first one to say, as soon as they say, don't touch your face, I can walk in the grocery store and get a hold of the grocery store buggy, and as soon as I touch that nasty handle, my nose goes to itching right then. I don't know if I'm allergic to it or what, but it, uh, but it's it's tough. But wash your hands, uh, keep them away from your face, uh, do the things that they say, and the the quicker. We start listening to them instead of arguing with them about what we need to do and how we need to do it, the quicker we're going to be back to congregating. Uh, but we, we've got to do our part. It's, it's not all the government's part to stop this. We've got to do our part. And uh, we, we've got to, we, I'm ready to get back as a church. Uh, I got tickled when I first got here. Chris said, talk to the camera. And, uh, you know, I... I I've noticed that camera back there. I've noticed this one. But I ain't never had to talk to it. Uh, I've always had faces here to talk to. I've got my beautiful daughter up here. But I know there's more folks out there. And, and y'all, it, it's hard. Uh, I ask that y'all pray for you pastors. Pray for your churches. Uh, I'm just thankful that, that God, I, I'm here for the Lord. And uh, he's going to help me get through this. But uh, I ask that y'all just be in prayer for all the churches around, all the first responders around, the paramedics, the police, the firefighters, everybody that goes out. Uh, 
never know what they're coming in contact with, but they get right in them vehicles anyhow, and they go right on because they know it's their job. And, uh, and the nurses, the store workers, yes, it's, it's something. But be in prayer for one another. You know, we take everything for granted. We as a country, we take it for granted. Oh, but I, I'm telling you, we need to be in prayer and lift one another up. Uh, as this week has went by, the Lord has really, I, I thought earlier in the week, Man, salvation is going to be going to be the topic of the service today. It's going to be the topic of the sermon. But as the week went on, uh, church, that, that that evidently was my thought and not God's plan, because we as a people, we as a country, we as Christians need to stand up again. Uh, we need to be more excited about what we've got instead of taking it for granted. We need to let folks know that I'm saved by grace. Uh, you know, I, I read a read a little, I didn't even read the whole story because I'm telling you, it's just, we live in a crazy, crazy time. Uh, as the Bible says, you know, people are so ignorant when it comes to the Word of God. And by no means am I a scholar. Uh, I'm the, I'm the least. I'm probably the least among all uh, anybody that could be called to preach, teach, or even be called a Christian to, uh, to be trying to say that I know something about the Bible. But there's a lot of ignorance in this country when it comes to the Word of God. Uh, that that article I was talking about, it was. I, I want to think it was in the in New York post that right there ought to say enough I wouldn't have to go any further that ought to be enough but blaming the evangelical Christians for the for the coronavirus I mean what do they think we prayed it on this country do we think we asked God to, to send it down not knowing who's going to get it or no but people's got to find somebody to blame, so the best thing to do is blame God. And when it comes to blaming God, we as Christians, we go to backing down. We, we go to getting scared. We don't want folks to know, well, if they know I'm one of them, they might whoop me, or they might try to sue me. But I'm telling you something. It's time to stand up for the Lord. Sorry, Bruce, I know I see you turning me down. I'm sorry. But it's time to get excited again. It's time to let folks know that, hey, I'm on his side. I'm saved by grace. I am one of these Christians that they keep trying to browbeat down and blame everything on in this country. You know, it's sad. They've cut out all non-essential surgeries in this country. I know Sister Karen was supposed to go and have rotator cuff surgery done. Might be non-essential to some folks, but it sure is hurting her. And things like that going on. And I seen where the Attorney General of Kentucky said, let's stop abortions through the coronavirus. A hospital in Connecticut cut out all non-essential surgeries, but still was carrying on abortions. What kind of country do we live in when we'll quit having surgeries for folks that need it and kill babies? And then they want to blame it on God's people. They want to blame it on God. Church, I'm telling you something. We live in a we live in a bad time. We live in a struggling time. But I'm thankful to say I'm saved by grace. And I'm thankful to say that I serve a God that's got this. He's got it under control. He's got it fixed. He's got it took care of. And I won't to give him the praise and the honor he deserves. I don't want to be ashamed. 
So as we take our Bibles and we turn to 2 Samuel chapter number 6, I had, uh, I told, I called them today, we were going to be, be here about 11, which I'm always a little late, I, but I called them and told them I got to reading and got caught up in this a little bit, which I've read it so many times, talking about David and, and the ark, it's, uh, it was a time when folks needed the Lord. And there's never a time that we don't need the Lord. I need the Lord every day. I want to feel his presence every day. And I want to be able to worship him every day freely. So in these verses, it's talking about where they bring the ark back. Israel. They bring it back. And it brings, you say, well, what's so exciting about the ark? Well, the Spirit of God is in this ark. And they wanted the Spirit of God wherever they was at. When the Spirit of God wasn't around, they, they could tell it. Can you tell it whenever the Spirit of God's not around you? Can you feel it? <coughs> well, I can. And you know why? The Spirit of God is not around me. It's not because He don't want to be. It's because I don't let Him. You say, you can't stop God. No, I can't stop God from doing anything. But I can get to the point where I don't feel Him. I can get out there far enough. And I want to feel Him. I need Him. I need Him here with me. I want Him here with me through this virus through cancer, through whatever we're going through. I want him here. David wanted him there. And they had went and got it. And uh, Yuza had got, he had, the ark had started tilting a little bit and he had reached and pushed it back up on there. And as soon as he touched it, it said the anger of the Lord come upon it. And he killed him. He died right there. And David, being angry because he had lost him, was also, it said it brought fear of the Lord upon him. So he left it in another town, in another country. And there was a fellow come to David and said, Listen, the Lord's blessing that bunch up one side and down the other. David said, we've got to get the ark here. Lord, can we get the ark here? They went and they got the ark. And in 2 Samuel chapter number 6, we're going to look at verse 13. And it was so when they bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen, and fatlings. And it said, And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen of effort. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for your presence. We're so thankful for that spirit that we feel here today. So thankful that for that peace that, that we feel that only you can give. But I pray now, dear Lord, that you'd just strengthen our voice one more time. Fill our hearts up with your sweet spirit so that we can preach your word with excitement and encouragement. I pray, dear Lord, for, for every request that's ever been spoken in this church, I pray your will be done. But not just here, but all the folks that's hurting and those that's had deaths. Dear Lord, you know what they all stand in the need of. I pray, dear Lord, for that day when we can all congregate together, when we can shake hands and hug necks one more time. I pray for that day, if it be your will. I pray, dear Lord, as, 
as we get prepared and, and start to do this, that it can touch one soul, dear Lord. It's worth it all. But we pray that somebody might get what they need out of this. We pray that they'll just heed to your word and listen. Not with ears, but with heart. I pray, dear Lord, for all the, the pastors and everyone around. I pray, dear Lord, that you just give them what they need during this time. The words they need to say. Dear Lord, we thank you so much. And we love you. We pray now that you just forgive us so much for what we fail you. I'm a failure every day, dear Lord, and I need your strength. But dear Lord, I pray that you'd just give us what you'd have us to have. These favors and blessings we ask in Christ's precious name. Amen. You know, I've, I've talked about David. David went through a lot. David knew uh, he knew the ups and downs when it comes to serving God. He knew uh, what it was like to get away from God. He knew uh, what it was like when he was close to God. Uh, it's amazing how uh, we, uh, we forget what it's like to be close to God sometime. We get so down and out. We get so caught up in our ways and, and what's going on in our poor little pitiful me life that we forget about what God's done for us. We forget about what God has brought us through. I want to tell you something. I can go back over my lifetime, and it's amazing what God's brought me and my family through. Uh, we went through where they've told us we've had cancer with our kids. We went through where we've had to deal with the loss of a little baby. Dear, but I'm telling you, God has helped us make it through all of this. We went through a time where, he where we was told that, that we would probably not have no great <coughs> grandkids when it comes to Emily. But by the grace of God, I want to tell you something. I got home yesterday from work. Walked in and there that little big marbled eyed thing said. And I don't know if she wanted me as bad as I wanted her, but it didn't really matter. But that little baby that they told us we could never have, we got. By the grace of God, we got. But most of all, as I go back through my life of the things that the Lord's done for me and the things that the Lord has given me, I remember the day as a nine year old boy sitting in New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. I don't remember what the preacher was preaching on, but I can tell you this much, it had to do with hell. You say, well, how do you know that? Because the reason I got saved, now listen to me, you say, well, I got saved because I wanted to go to heaven. Well, I can tell you this much, I got saved because I didn't want to die and go to hell. I knew as a nine-year-old boy if I died in my lost condition that hell would be my home. You say, well, you think these folks, if the Lord's dealt with you and you've reached that age of accountability and you hadn't accepted him as your personal Savior and you die in that lost condition, hell will be your home. They, that's not my word. That's God's word. You say, well, well, preacher, what's that got to do with David and being excited and dancing? Church, we've lost our excitement. People, we've lost our excitement when it comes to serving God. We don't get excited. I've had folks to tell me we don't need that old charismatic mess in the church. We don't need that old loud hellfire and brimstone in the church no more. I'll tell you what, that's as much hogwash as I've ever heard. If we've ever needed a little more excitement in the house of God, it's today. Pray there's some preachers out there that listen to this. I'm afraid a lot of the excitement in the church is being lost behind the pulpit. Preachers come in with that same, just, just same little old low tone voice and speak and talk and just don't never get out of a certain level. You'll have folks going to sleep on you. People say, well, you don't have to be that loud. There ain't nobody there. I might want somebody outside the door to hear me. We need excitement. We need joy. We need to let folks know out there in a world where there are folks dying left and right, lost. 
that there's something about this, that there's an excitement about being saved by grace. There's a joy and there's a peace unspeakable knowing that if I die tonight, that heaven will be my home. Church, I want to tell you something. These folks that need that encouragement in their life. So it said King David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was, uh, he was girded with linen. I mean, he took off his king clothes. He got down to where he was just coming from. Listen, there's no difference between me and Emily and Bruce and Chris when it comes to salvation. Yeah, I preach. But when it comes down to it, we all the same. We all brothers and sisters in Christ. We've all got the same blood flowing through our veins. But it said, Oh, David danced. You know what it takes to dance before the Lord? You know what it takes to wave your hands in the house of God? You know what it takes to get a little excited when it comes to serving God? You know what it takes to shout in church? It takes taking off that, that, that prideful mess and laying it aside. It takes taking off all that old worldly and earthly things and laying it aside, not caring who's there, not caring what they're saying or thinking. It takes that. We've got to a day and time in this world where folks says that's that's unacceptable now. We don't need that kind of mess in the church no more. We need games that we can play and keep folks enthused. We need coffee machines and we need popcorn machines in the house of God. We need the rock and roll themed lights. We need the big old bands beating and a banging and a playing and getting with it. That's what we need in the house of God now. Then we need that little old nimble voice preacher to come up there and say, Amen. Ain't it good? Church, I'm telling you something. We're going to have to get excited again. Preachers, it starts right back here. It starts right back here. I remember doing a revival one time. I believe Emily went with me the first night. And uh, she was the only one I heard amen at that church. Preacher sat there. I could just see that little old preacher. You know, just a little nothing. No amen and no old men. I told him when I started to leave, I said, our church where I was pastoring now, I said, they coming, a lot of them coming with us tomorrow night. And uh, he told me, he said, well, we're not that just real vocal here at this church. I said, well, maybe they won't scare y'all too bad tomorrow night then. I said, because I'm bringing a bunch that are vocal. I'm bringing a bunch that don't care to worship the Lord. I'm bringing a bunch that don't care to say amen. I'm bringing a bunch that don't care to wave the victory towel. I'm bringing a bunch that don't care to shout every now and then. I'm bringing a bunch that don't care to cry every now and then. Church, I want to tell you something. We need to get back to that time where we're not ashamed to dance before the Lord. We're not worried about what some little person tells us about how we're serving God. I want to tell you something. I serve God the way I feel led to serve God. You say, well, you won't have a church much longer the way you're going. It's not like that in this world no more. Well, I want to tell you something. By the grace of God, the church didn't call me to preach, and the church is not going to take me out of preaching. 
Now, you mightn't take me out of friendship. I mightn't go. But I can tell you this. If I leave friendship, God called me to preach. Not Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Not New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. Not Walker Missionary Baptist Church. Not any of these churches called me to preach. But God called me to preach. And when it comes time to go, he'll have a place for me to go and preach. So we need... We need to get a little excitement about us. It said, David danced before the Lord. But let's look on down here for just a minute. David had married Saul's daughter. And uh, she was a dandy. She was a dandy. She's a lot like these modern day pastors, modern day preachers where it's more about the knowledge. It's more about the sermonettes. It's more about, more about the preacher than it is about God. This is how she was. And it said David came in to bless his household. Verse 20. Of 2 Samuel chapter 6, it says, Then David returned to bless the household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaid of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said, Michael, it was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father and before all this house, all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I like verse 22. It said, And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in my own sight, and the hands made, uh, made servants which have, uh, thou hast spoken of, of them shall I uh, be had in honor. And it said, Therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child under the day of her death. She missed out on her blessing, church. She missed out on her blessing, people. It said, as David come in, and she was there, and she said, There you are. You know, I don't, I don't look at it as David was naked in front of him. <clears throat> but as I look at these verses, it was David was open to the people. They seen just an humble, they seen what kind of man he was. They seen that he wasn't ashamed to serve the Lord. They seen that he wasn't ashamed to dance before the Lord. But David was doing this before the Lord. He wasn't doing it for Michael. He wasn't doing it for these maid servants. Listen to it. Verse 21. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me his ruler over the people of the Lord, <coughs> over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. It was before the Lord which chose me, saved me. As much as I love my mother and daddy, as much as I love my daughters and my little son, as much as I love my granddaughter and my, my son-in-laws, as much as I love Chris and Bruce, they didn't choose me. God chose me, and he saved me. There ain't a one of these folks that I mentioned could have saved me. <coughs> and I'm talking about from a dying, burning hell. There ain't, there ain't nobody. My wife, that I love so much and loves me so much, would give our lives for each other but couldn't save one another. 
And David said, so that's the reason I do what I do. See, if we get our minds, whenever, whenever the Lord lets us get back in here someday, if we get our minds off of who's around us, if we get our minds off of who's seeing us, and start doing it before the Lord. What kind of service do you think we can have? What do you think we can do when it comes to worshiping? What do you think the world would see then? <coughs> they would want to know more about God. They would want to know more about God. So what we need to do is be more like David in these latter verses. Now, don't get me wrong. You go back and read David. David, he didn't care. He went to battle. David didn't care if he wanted a woman, he got him. Michael was married. Saul's daughter was married. It says as they went and got her and brought her to David, said her husband walked behind her crying. David didn't care. That's who he wanted. And but I want to tell you this much. He knew who his God was. He knew who was going to bless him. There's not enough money in this world to bless me the way God's blessed me. There's not enough money to buy what God's gave me. Church, we need to be more excited when it comes to worshiping God. I'm going to leave this verse with you. Mark chapter number 8, verse 38. It says, Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh uh, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You say, Preacher, I don't do it because I'm ashamed. Sometimes I just don't know what to say. Or I just can't stand up in front of people. Church, we can make every excuse we want to make. Use anything you want to use. But some of the sweetest testimonies that I've ever heard was when people stood up and didn't say a word. Just with a hand lifted towards glory and eyes full of tears, you knew right then what it meant. It ain't about, it ain't about the big words. It's about the love and doing it before the Lord. Our prayer is that the Lord's dealing with you, that you'll get things fixed in your life. Our prayer is that you'll get excited about being saved one more time. Church, I'm thankful to be saved by grace, and I want folks to know it. We love you and we thank you if you need us. If you can find somebody, get a hold of us. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for what you've allowed us to feel right here. So thankful for that sweet peace that only you can give. We pray that hearts seek that peace today. And we pray, dear Lord, that they can find it. We pray as a country that we get an excitement back when it comes to worshiping you. We love you and we thank you. These favors and blessings are asked in Christ's name. Amen.